Hello and welcome to this morning time taste challenge. We have two American adjunct lager beers. Um, I forgot the glasses there in the next room. I'll get them. Um, Paps Blue Ribbon, 4.8% alcohol, company founded in 1844. Adjunct lager uses corn syrup. Coors Banquet. Introduced in 1873. Older cans, I have to say Coors Original. That's the original Coors. Now in Canada, there's Coors Original. Some people claim it's different than the Banquet. I'm not sure about that, but it could be a different recipe. Um, Coors Banquet beer, 5% alcohol, certified kosher. I asked somebody one time that used to go to Denver a lot. They actually lived in Denver two, for two years. I said, why is all the Coors beer certified kosher? And they were saying, well, Denver has a large Jewish community. And uh, it says probably why. And I said, oh, I hadn't thought of that. I knew there was some kind of reasoning. Um, so you would think that Coors would have the advantage here, but we're not going to be sure until we do it. Let me, sorry about that. Let me get the cans. I meant to say, let me get the glasses. I've got the cans. Okay. Uh, got one more Dawn Buster scheduled for Mardi Gras Day, and then that'll be it until Easter Sunday, but that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. P for Paps. So Coors will have that. Perhaps has that little darker head, almost like an off-white eggshell and it's dark gold. You say, well, it looks dark on video. It does, but it looks dark in real life too. It's darker than you would think. It's kind of overcast. It is a very overcast day. A chilly winter day, damp in Louisiana. Coors will have that slight banana flavor from that weird yeast they use. Paps has that slight Chardonnay wine flavor from that weird yeast that they use. Whitehead. And obviously lighter beer. Gold instead of the amber gold. Mm hmm. Crash Bandit. Morning, Ron. I personally prefer Coors Banquet between the two. I think I do too, but we're about to find out. Price, Coors is going to cost you more, especially if you buy those squat neck bottles. It's not worth the price. Uh, before Food for Less got ran, ransacked by Hurricane Ida, I was able to get Coors Banquet, six packs of these pint cans for about five dollars and fifty cents or less uh but they, their store never reopened after the hurricane i don't know if it's going to reopen it looks like they're doing some work on that whole strip mall but it got the whole strip mall is closed except for the pawn shop the pawn shop at the end um they reopened so we'll see. I would like for them to come back because that was my best deal on Coors Banquet. Plus, they had good deals on Paps. They had good deals on Steel Reserve 211. But, uh, okay, what we're made of matters. Here's the Coors website. Only the finest ingredients are used to brew Coors Banquet. That's been true since Adolf Coors brewed the first batch in 1873. All these years later, we wouldn't have it any other way. It's pasteurized now, though and brewed only in Golden, Colorado. Why? I think it's really because 
it's not that popular and they don't need any extra breweries to brew it at. Whereas Coors Light is so popular, they have to have it brewed across the United States. But that's just a theory. I can't prove it. I don't. I think Coors Banquet is more popular now than 10 years ago. It was much more popular 30 years ago. But see, once Coors Light came to the forefront in the late 80s, Coors Banquet started to decline, much like when Bud Light came to prominence in the late 1980s, then Budweiser began to decline from its peak production in 1988. It's not like people abandoned Budweiser for uh, craft beer, per se, really. It's that they abandoned it for Bud Light. Our roots run deep. Moravian barley. Rocky Mountain water. They're showing the copper kettles where they're cooking the beer. Beautiful facility. I've seen a tour of it online, but never went to a, a tour. Never. I have been to Denver, but I didn't go to Golden, Colorado and take a tour. Mistake, I guess. Aromatic hops added to bittering hops. Subtle blend of Chinook, Hallertau, Hercules, and Taurus hops give Coors Banquet just the perfect hint of bitterness to offset the multi sweetness. So they show a guy with hop pellets. Chinook, Halitaw, Hercules, and Taurus. 147 calories. Water, barley malt, corn syrup, yeast, and hop extract. Hop extract. They don't talk about the corn syrup on their description. William Wonka. Perhaps has got to be the cool beer. Has gotten to be the cool beer. Coors is better in my opinion, but I wish Coors would come back with the Coors Extra Gold. They just got rid of Extra Gold last year. It ain't coming back. Sad. Yeah, the steiny bottles are so expensive compared to cans, it just ain't worth it, ain't. You're in Iowa, okay. Oh, this is easy for me, says Michael Stevens, laughing out loud. Banquet is my, one of my go-to beers. I like it too. Daryl, good morning, Ronald. Good morning to you, Daryl. Mentioning Coors Light, honestly, I prefer Keystone Light over Coors Light, though, says K, Crash Bandit. Um, I don't really drink light beer, so I can't address that. I like the price of Keystone more. My go-to beer coming up is going to be natural ice because I'm going to go buy a 30-pack brick. You know, they call them bricks. 30-pack at uh, Walmart. If it's, They still have it for $19.49, I think. $19.49. Not getting much aroma. Smell like roasted something. Uh, that's uh, proper. Maybe that's Chardonnay. I'm not getting any banana. Let's go with the taste. <laughs> Tastes like runts. They're both dry. Their sweetness level is probably two, two out of five hop cones. Their bitterness level is one, and at the most, one and a half out of five. I, I, the other one was sugar cubes. I meant to say not hop cones, sugar cubes. One to one and a half out of five hop cones. So if you're looking for bitter beer, no. Nah. But you know, nobody ever said, I want a bitter beer. I'm a hop head. Let me go get Chorus Banquet or Paps Blue Ribbon. No one ever said that. You're going to go get something better, you know. Uh, you say, I want a smoky scotch. I want a smoky scotch. Let me go get Tomatin. No. A space side. No, you're going to get Art Bag 10. You know. No, nah, I mean. All right, anyway. Got the nannies, the nanners, nanas. And the Chardonnay. I have Chardonnay wine, yeah, on the shelf. I just have to bring it in to um, do a, a video for it. I hadn't opened it. The Chardonnay is from 
Ian J. Gallo, who makes like a thousand brands. These are close, though, and I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm just going to get what's cheaper. I can get a 12-pack of Paps Blue Ribbon for $9.99 at Albertsons. So would I pay more than that to get Coors Banquet? No. I would pay whatever is cheaper. I would buy which whichever one is cheaper per ounce, which tends to be core. Um, Paps Blue Ribbon, but not necessarily always the case, but usually the case. So Paps is going to win on price point. Not a great victory, but still a victory. They tried selling ultra budget beers in Louisiana about 12 years ago, and that was a colossal failure. Like uh, doggone uh, Milwaukee Special Reserve, ten ninety nine a 30 pack. The initial sales were good, but there was no repeat buyers, including myself. There were no repeat buyers. The stuff was so horrendously bad that it did not justify the price point. $10.99 for a 30-pack was no value with that stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so consequently, you just never saw that stuff again. Uh, they tried selling that. Gold mine lager at Whole Foods, ultra cheap beer from the same outfit. It bombed. Uh, it was nasty. They tried selling the uh, Walgreens Big Flats 1901. Same story there. So they, you, there is a limit beyond which Louisianians cannot be pushed. You say Louisiana, they like regular common beers like Bud Light and Nickel of Ultra. That's what y'all drink. Oh, that's true. That's right. That's right. But those are just normal, ordinary products. They're not ghastly atrocities of mankind. So I'm going to say this is Coors with the banana flavor. And it is. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Are you feeling like right that? I knew I'd get it right. I just knew it. Or I should say I hoped it. I hoped I would. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Good morning, Ronald says Daryl. Good morning to you. Mentioning Coors Light, honestly. Oh, wait. That's these comments already been read. Dr. Frosty Brew. Cheers, Ron. Cheers to you. Okay. So, short story long, Coors Banquet. It has a distinctive flavor. You may not like it. One person told me, I read the comments, if I taste any banana, it gags me. I hate the taste of banana. I say, well, you wouldn't want Eagle's banana bread beer. Formerly Wells Banana Bread Day. You wouldn't want to try that. I mean, Coors could turn you off, too. I do believe, I do believe, I do believe, I do believe. It's owned by Molson Coors, but it's made by Coors. Now, up in Canada, in the Dominion of Canada, as they used to call it, um, Molson makes Coors. And they call it Coors Original. Now... It's a 50-50 uh, merger. If you read their website, Coors did not buy out Molson, and Molson did not buy Coors. They, they merged. Coors owns 50% of the company, and Molson owns 50% of the company. They have two chairmen, Pete Coors and uh, whoever the Molson guy is. Okay, so it is a family-owned company in the sense that it's two families, the Corleones, and the Detatlias, no, the Barzinis. So, uh, <laughs> so they own it. Um, fruity notes like Monroe from Too Close for Comfort. Well, it ain't that fruity, you know? It's not that fruity, Mister Rush. Hi, Ron Ontario. Hello to you, RB. I think Mr. Rush was modeled on Jack Kirby, a famous cartoonist who moved to California back in the 70s and came up with all those interesting comic book characters like the Silver Surfer and Command D. 
the last boy on earth who was born in a bunker called Command D. So he named him Command D, but he was actually born in a bunker called Command D. Anyway, um, poor old uh, Ted Knight got so sick. He looked so bad on that show when he was dying. It was really a heartbreaker. You remember Too Close for Comfort. It was on, uh, I believe, ABC television. Then it uh, lost its contract with them, and they went to uh, syndication for a few years. If you remember, it was syndicated uh, and picked up by what, whoever wanted to pick it up, independent channels. But I didn't really watch it then. But um, All right, you go over there, Coors. Now, don't get the idea that this is like super banana flavor and that this one, Coors, uh, I mean to say Paps, is super Chardonnay flavor. That, that these are subtle, very subtle characteristics that you may or may not pick up. I have the ability to pick it up. I, I can I can detect it. Other people probably say, you're crazy. It doesn't have banana. Where did you get that information from? You're just making it up. You lie. That's a lie, Pee Wee. It's not a lie, Captain Carl, because I got it off the Coors website. <laughs> And it's not a lie about Paps because I got it from their brewmaster. Well, at least their brewmaster from 1980. <laughs> Doesn't seem like anything changed with it because when I started drinking Paps Blue Ribbon in 1996, I thought it had a, a, a strange flavor then. I thought, what's this flavor? I didn't dislike it. I just thought it was strange. When you're a stranger. And I, I and, and uh, then uh, I read the article from 1980 and I said, oh, there you go. Just call me Rube, Ron. Rube. Okay. Rube. So, the winner is a toss-up. It's like you call it. You know, you can throw to second base or you can throw to first and get the runner out. It's a fielder's choice. Just, just buy what you want. Uh, but I'm going to go with whatever's cheaper, you dig. <laughs> you know, and what's going to be cheaper is going to be the PAPS, typically, but not necessarily, but typically, typically, typically. Now, would Pap, how would PAPS do against Dos Equis Lager Especial from Mexico? Um, I think PAPS Blue Ribbon would win because Dos Equis Lager Especial is too bland. It's too dull. It's too plain. It's too boring. It's all those things and less. Um, it's everything you wanted in a beer and less. You know what I'm saying? It's some beers do more with less and Dos Equis does less with more. It's not the most interesting beer in the world. It's not even the most interesting beer in Mexico. Frankly, it's not interesting. Now, Dos Equis, the original, the Ambar, the original Dos Equis, yeah, that's interesting. That's a good one. That's a winner. I like it. And their specialties are great, like the Roja, which was a red or amber ale, which they should bring back, or was it a red lager? I think it was a red lager. The Dos Equis Pale Ale with the ant, fire ant tears, the spicy pale ale, great product. That didn't last. Hmm. How would Paps Blue Ribbon do against, uh, say, um, Red Stripe? Um, it would probably win. And then you'd say, no, it's hooray beer. Yeah, I would say hooray beer, but hooray for Paps. But this I do not know until I actually institute the challenge. You did, you see, you, yeah, you stand under, you stand under. Now, Tecate, uh, that would be a good one. I've been to Tecate, Mexico. I did not tour the brewery, although Tecate is still made there. Been on the market since 1944. Um, I still have one can of Rolling Rock left. Would Rolling Rock do well against uh, Coors Banquet? Uh, no, it would probably lose. Rolling Rock. 
isn't going to win too many contests. Um, maybe I'll just drink it. Maybe I'll just drink it. You say, you mean drink a beer just to drink it? You mean not do a video? What's wrong with you? Are you you're losing it. Um, maybe just drink it. Wouldn't mind putting in a challenge, though. If I was angry and I played video games and I was a nerd, I, I, I'd just be doing Rolling Rock all day long. All day long. But I'm not. So I don't. I'm not an anti-Rolling Rockite. I, uh, I adored the Rolling Rock Red Rock, the Amber Ale, uh, Lager, Amber Lager. Of course, uh, that lasted about 10 minutes in a relative sense, in a relative sense. Okay, now, I like the Rolling Rock labels. They always change in the labels, so I get to collect the cans and have a nice collection. I would like to bring Old Milwaukee into play, but I can't find it easily. I'm not going to go track Old Milwaukee down, you know. Tell you the truth, my options are pretty limited because uh, we get a lot of regular beer, but we don't get a lot of different regular beers. We get... We could just get like a few main products. Of course, now I do have to admit, I did not bring Budweiser into this yet. And that there's no excuse for that. So to be fair, I need to really do that rolling rock against Miller High Life. I could go get another can, no big deal, no big deal. Um uh, Probably in a more proper sense, I should go against Budweiser with it. I don't think it's going to beat Budweiser. Not sure. Um, but still, if you if I made a list of all the regular beers we get here, I'm not talking about light beers. It's not regular. Light. It's really not that big of a list. It's it's not Foster's. Yes, I could do that. Um, that's one. Bud Light two. I mean Budweiser two, course three, Paps Blue Ribbon four, Schlitz five, Rolling Rock six. But I can't even get Rolling Rock in this town anymore. Anywhere in this parish. We don't have counties, we have parishes. Um it's just it's not too many. And we get imports, like I said, the red stripe and the Dosekis and the Tecate. And the, 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 the Modelo Lagara Especial and the, um, well, of course, Corona and Corona Familiar. I'm a 10 hour drive from Mexico, 10 hours. If I leave at five in the morning, I can be there for the afternoon. Uh, but they got all this uh, protocols stopping people from crossing. But I guess that's all going to stop. I could cross illegally, probably, probably get in faster. <laughs> um, I just tell them, oh, I snuck in. Oh, yeah, come on in. But you, if you do it the official way, it's, it's, a, it's a delay. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I'm running out of options on this. And um, how would Schlitz do against Pabst? Oh, Schlitz will wipe Paps out. Schlitz, Schlitz will wipe Paps out. I'm not even going to buy another 12. I don't think I'm going to buy another 12 pack of Schlitz, but Schlitz will wipe it out. Wipe it out. Well, Schlitz always wipes everybody out. The indefatigable Schlitz, the invincible Schlitz. Ain't nobody beating Schlitz. Schlips. Yeah, Schlips. How you like that? Didn't drink too much. Um, Foster's in the oil cans, correct. We only get Schlitz in six and 12 pack, uh, pack glass bottles, and I like that with food. Uh, KB, we get Schlitz in the cans only. The pint cans, yes, but uh, since Food for Less got decimated, hadn't seen it around. We can't get Molson Canadian in Middle Tennessee anymore, says Omar. Um, we used to get Molson Canadian around here, but it faded off. We still get Moosehead all day long. Labatt is gone. I can go into New Orleans and find it, but I'm not going to go track it down. Hams versus Slits. Can't do it. Hams uh, <clears throat> was a miserable failure for Louisiana. When Dixie was trying to sell suitcases, 
I don't think they sold them all. I think they had to send them back. Mathern's never even tried to sell hams. I, I told the manager at, at Mathern's, I said, hey, uh, they got this beer called hams. It's available. He said, oh, OK. And I thought to myself, that's about as far as it's going to go is, oh, OK. They ain't never going to order it. And they never did. When people tell me, oh, OK, I take that as get lost. I don't have time for you, which is basically what it means. Schlitz so good, it's hard to find. Says only matters in your elections. Yeah, the best beer, the best American lager beer, you know, adjunct lager beer that nobody can find. Two good ones, says Sasquatch. All right, so you did a good job, uh, Coors. Mm. You didn't necessarily win, but you certainly certainly did not lose. Um, man, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, I could have brought in Red Stripe. I could have brought in Old Milwaukee, but that was right about when it faded from here. I could have brought in uh, Shape, well, not Schaefer, but we used to get Schaefer. Just think what I could have done 20 years ago. Uh, uh, what I wouldn't give for five more years. 10 more years. Um, but all those things changed. Every One after the other, they all died away, natural or otherwise. And you know why Schlitz is still around? Because it always made money for its partners. Um, Milwaukee's best premium. Well, of course, blame Miller for that. They killed it. Schaefer, gone. It's really depressing. Now. I don't know. Oh, Bush. I could bring Bush into this, but. You know as well as I do, Bush is not going to be Pabst. That will not happen. That cannot happen. It's an impossibility. But I could bring it in just to do it, but it will lose. It will lose. Yeah, we get Bush. What am I thinking? Of course, Bush. We used to get the 12-ounce bottles, but they got rid of them around here. I guess nobody bought them, but except for me. Um, Bush has no chance. No chance. It's good for a barbecue or a fish fry, but it, it's on its own flavor characteristics. It's, it's not good. It just doesn't have anything going for it. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, that's it. That's it. That's it. It's over. That's it. All right. Um, so, you know, the, the, the possibilities are quite limited. All right. Only Schlitz I ever had is the Blue Bull, and I like it a lot. Oh, I do, too. I can get it in Baton Rouge. But see, that's a different category. I would never do a, a Hellas Bach beer, American adjunct Hellas Bach beer against a, 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 a adjunct lager. It wouldn't make any sense. Um, be, it wouldn't be a challenge because you would immediately know which is which. So it wouldn't be it would be nonsensical. Now, would I do King Cobra against Schlitz malt liquor? Oh, I'm sorry, Schlitz lager beer. Sorry, strong lager. Uh, now, would I do uh, uh, um, Mickey's against uh, the six percent steelers up? Well, yeah, I would do all of those because it would be a credible challenge. Ever have Schlitz Red Bull, Ron? Yes, I have a bottle to prove it and a can, bottle and a can. Um, bought those in Detroit. I bought the Red Bull in New York City and Queens, actually, Queens, New York. Yes. Along with the, I could show you all this can, but y'all would uh, have a nervous breakdown if I showed it to you. I found that on Sutpen Boulevard in Queens, New York. Yes, I have it. I bought it. In 2010, before I started doing video reviews, which was a big mistake, I should have started earlier. But um, I didn't know that people did video reviews. But if I showed you that can, you 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 have a nervous breakdown. I could show it to you, but you'd have a nervous breakdown. Uh, Schlitz and Grain Belt, two of the best American lager. I, I bought Grain Belt, Dan Page. I bought Grain Belt. I'll tell you this story real fast. I was on a road trip in 1996. And I was driving in Wisconsin and I went by Stevens Point. Stevens Point. I went to Stevens Point and I saw the six pack of cans. 
I said, Stevens Point beer? I ain't never heard of that. So I bought the six pack and uh, and then I was uh, driving down the road and I saw uh, Grain Belt. I said, well, Grain Belt? I said, it's one of those regional breweries. I said, I got to buy it. So I bought a six pack and I came home with the uh, cans or bottles. I don't remember. I got it in my collection and uh, I liked it. I thought Grain Belt was pretty nice, you know, but uh, then they started selling Stevens Point beers down here in 2012 when they started getting into craft beer. They had the IPA and the Porter and uh, I think a Black Lager, and all, but it failed. Terrible failure. I felt I felt bad for them because I really tried to promote them. Okay, last last call. We out of here. Thirty minutes is too long. Uh, I like both of these beers. I prefer Coors in a bottle. No preference here for me. I got to be honest, Josh. Uh, PBR I have no problem with. And a can. Cheers. Clink in the mugs. Cheers to you. Dan Page. Schlitz and Green. But oh yeah, you're rid of it. Drank the red back in the mid '80s here. I haven't seen it since then. Yeah, uh, Schlitz Red Bull came out in 1984 actually. The XL lager has an extra long finish, which I guess they don't they don't let all the sugar ferment. So it's got a little of the corn sugar left. Gives that little very little taste. Um, same ABV, 5.9. Ah yes, point bock. The bock. Mm, yeah. Well, see, like I say, they tried to sell those around here, but they just didn't. They just, they just didn't make it. You know, they didn't make it. Didn't make it. All right. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. I got the Genesee uh, specialty beer that Wayne sent me from Pennsylvania. It's the uh, cranberry. Uh, oh, what's it? Cranberry and some other fruit flavored uh, Keller beer. My friend David was just going berserk, angry about it. You're going to see that come out tomorrow when it gets uh, released, that video. He was just like too, too like uh, vicious against it. You know, he hit me with a flower because, because baby, you're so vicious. But uh, I said, oh, come on, it's not that bad. It tastes a little strange, you know, but, you know, you got to get a grip, you know, but he don't get a grip. He just drinks another one, you know. But anyway, uh, all right. So thank you. And um We'll be back for more taste challenges. And it might be overnight, might be in the morning, might be in the afternoon. People are talking about bringing in food. I'm going to be, during Lent, I'm going to be bringing in Popeye's breakfasts, not on Friday, of course, with meat, but you know, but uh, so get ready. People get ready, get ready, because here I come.